Hello, my name is Kaylee Morlock, and today is May 10th, 2020. Hello, Kaylee. Thank you for letting me interview you regarding Ericsson's psychosocial stages of development. The purpose of this interview is for you to demonstrate your understanding of how the theory applies to you and students you plan to teach. Thank you. Um, it's important for teachers to understand the personal and social development of children. That way, we may better have the ability to motivate, instruct, and engage them in the curriculum based upon their age group. So first I'm going to talk about Eric Erikson. He was a German-American psychologist that had no formal training in psychology, however he was a student of Sigmund Freud. Erikson postulated that there were eight stages of social personal development. Um, he outlined these stages in two of his texts. One was from 1968 called Identity, Youth, and Crises. And the second one was from 1980, which is entitled Identity in the Life Cycle. Although each of the stages varies by the age span um, for the individuals, they all are the same in that the individual has to resolve um, an identity crisis. So I'll get started with the stages. Stage one um, is called trust versus mistrust. We see this from infancy till about 18 months. The idea is that the babies need to form um, a trust for the mother or whatever the prominent adult is in the life of the child. If they don't successfully build trust because the parent is either negligent or inconsistent, this can have long-term um, psychological consequences. The second stage is called autonomy versus doubt, and we see this from 18 months till about three years. During this time, children seem to have this dualistic desire to do things on their own, but they also need the support of their families. So parents who occur encourage this autonomous behavior tend to have more um, confident children, whereas the ones that suppress these urges, the children end up feeling incompetent and helpless. Erickson's third stage is called initiative versus guilt, and we see this from three until about six years old. Stage three is kind of a continuation of stage number two, but a little bit more advanced because children are developing their motor skills and have acquired more language acquisition. Um, during this time, children are jumping and they're playing and they're climbing trees and just kind of exploring around more. So when parents encourage this initiation, the children um, feel a sense of accomplishment and again, confidence. And when this is suppressed, um, children tend to feel guilty about these acts of initiation, which are quite natural. Stage four is called industry versus inferiority. We see this from six until 12 years old. Um, as parents' guidance and the importance of that wanes, children tend to um, put more emphasis on their teachers and their peer group. During this time is when a child kind of defines what sex, success and failure is in their life and where they stand in relationship to that. Stage five is identity and role confusion from 12 until about 18 years old. Erickson believed that with the onset of puberty coupled with the pressures of trying to figure out what you're supposed to do with your life and who you are in the world um, ended up resulting in Questions of self-identity and self-discovery. Um, a lot of this we see in teenagers trying to figure out who they are in relationship to their peer group. It is natural for kids to want to explore during this time and experiment. However, it can be detrimental because this is the first time in their lives where their actions can produce pretty severe consequences. Stage six is called intimacy versus isolation. And this happens in young adulthood. During this time, adults um, want to share their lives with people. Um, they want to be intimate and have partnerships that are both stimulating and nurture their individual growth. And those that don't find positive relationships end up retreating into isolation. The final stage of Erickson's, oh, oh sorry, there's another one. Stage seven is called generativity versus self-absorption, which is middle adulthood. Erickson describes generativity as the interest in establishing and guiding the next generation. So the best examples of this will be um, the urge to have children or have a meaningful career such as teaching that directly impacts the youth of the future. 
when adults do not engage in this kind of meaningful behavior, they end up feeling a sense of um, stagnation and self-absorption. Now the final stage is stage eight, and it is integrity versus despair. And we find this in late adulthood. Erickson characterizes this as the final identity crisis. Um, during this time, we look back on our lives and we see our accomplishments and our successes and our failures, and we can either look at it with a sense of wholeness and taking responsibility for our choices we've made in our life, or on the flip side, um, people might look back with regret and despair. Thank you. At what stage of development do you see yourself now, and why do you think so? I would say that I'm at stage seven, which is generativity versus self-absorption. Um, I think I'm at this stage because I am middle adulthood. I'm 33 years old. I have passed through the previous stages. Um, I am in a partnership. And by pursuing this single subject credential, um, I am wanting to give back to future generations. Explain how being at this stage of development may influence your behavior and outlook in your classroom. And on what do you base this explanation? I would say this stage influences my behavior um, because the desire to help the next generation requires a certain amount of intentionality and determination, which directly impacts my outlook in the classroom. To successfully help students require that I continuously self-examine and reflect um, on my overall disposition and also the teaching strategies that I'll be employing in the classroom. Um, having passed through Erickson's previous stages, I can identify the ones that I will be teaching and students, um, and seeing those for what they are allows me to be more patient and supportive, compassionate, and overall authentic in my outlook. Explain how being at this stage of development may influence their behavior and outlook in your classroom. On what do you base this information? Once I complete my credential, I'll be teaching primarily middle and high school students, so between 12 and 18. This is Erickson's identity versus role confusion, stage five. Um, I remember this being a very impactful time, one of self-discovery and trying to figure out who you are um, in relationship to your friends who are increasingly more important. What might be some disconnects between you and your students, keeping the differences in the two stages in mind? Um, at this time, my students are going to care less and less about authority in general, and that could be parents, teachers, um, administrators in the school. So um, adolescents are going to be rebellious and assertive. Um, they're going to be more experimentative with ideologies and identity and sex and alcohol. So I'll have to keep all of these differences in mind. Uh, according to Erickson, this time is when students are trying to grapple with their own identity, where they've been in their lives, and what goals are attainable and opportunities for their future. So the disconnects will be a lot of like self-worth and identity, um, and knowing that a lot of their opportunities are going to be based on their own effort. And that begins at this age, um, that they need to realize that people's opinions don't really matter and to just grow to be the individual they're supposed to be. Any final comments or thoughts? Erickson's theory of personal and social development is founded upon how the environment of a child is shaped by their identity and their future experiences. Understanding these stages allows us as teachers to positively influence their lives so they can continuously grow to be happy and healthy and successful human beings. Thank you. Thank you.